that time of the week again, and we have actually the title for today's show was actually going to be a lot longer. It was going to be five tips for streaming without your phone and looking good doing it without breaking the bank. So we're really going to talk about all those things today, but we shortened the title today to five tips to streaming without your phone and without breaking the bank. So join us for this awesome show today. I think a lot of viewers out there have constantly been asking us, how can I up my production value, make it look better, make it sound better, make my content better without spending a lot of money doing it? That is a common recurring theme or question for us. So we're going to dive into it today. You are watching Wirecast Live. I'm your host, Andrew Haley. I'll be back right after these opening credits. Welcome back to another episode of Wirecast Live. I'm your host, Andrew Haley. Thank you so much for joining us. If you could leave a comment or a like or a share in, or actually share this out right now, I'd really appreciate it. But let us know where you're watching from. I want to know where you're tuning in from, whether it's across the world in Tanzania, or if you're joining us from our friends in Europe or Australia, or maybe you're just here locally in the States with us, maybe in California, maybe up the coast, maybe on the East Coast. Please let us know where you're watching from and if you have somebody who wants to enjoy or you think would enjoy the show please share it out to them we would love to get more people into this show each week we are here every thursday 2 30 p.m pacific time we are in california and on this show we dive into topics related to live video and live streaming now we make a software called wirecast you may have heard of it you probably may even use it if you're a regular watcher of this show but we also are just big proponents of live video in general the democratization of media has uh, never before been easier. With the rise of social media and live video going out here and there and everywhere, individuals, brands, organizations are taking advantage of these easy-to-use tools like Wirecast to start streaming either to an audience or a fan club. You may have noticed Twitch gamers streaming games. Uh, why people use Wirecast for that as well. So there's a lot of different applications for this. If you are in the business or even just the hobby of communicating ideas visually through audio video or sound then this is a great show for you to tune into because we cover all kinds of things related to not only your production value like we will today but we also talk about things like um, businesses how to build a business how to market yourself better how to gain more audience how to go for more views or how to go for more of a monetization we'll actually dive into that a little bit with our guest today uh, so there's a lot going on now you can totally get plugged in with this community in a lot of different ways we have an email list you can subscribe to if you're curious We'll send you updates about the show. We'll send you what the topics are so you can keep an eye on it, mark your calendar, and go back and watch an episode you missed or something and get some great information. The other way to get plugged in is through our social channels. You can follow us on any of our social media channels that we're on. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can find us at any of those spots subscribe or like us we tend to post news updates and things like that we also have a users group on facebook so if you are already diving into wirecast and you want some help with that or questions you can do that and then we also like to celebrate people who are live streaming so we have an initiative called where's wirecast you can actually just post a live stream or a hashtag with where is wirecast and we'll find it and each week we pick a winner for the live stream of the week so this week we have uh, a special stream that was shared with us, or a screenshot, from one of our users in the Facebook user group. I have it on my screen now. Uh, and this is shared to us by Nick Bacon, his lovely dog, who was acting as a stand-in for, I think, a lovely lighting model and uh, perhaps just a focus uh, to get ready for a live event. So thanks for sharing that screenshot, Nick. That is our Stream of the Week. You are the Stream of the Week winner. And again, we hope to see more streams from you and other users. Post them out there. Again, use the hashtag where is Wirecast, and we can help find that and celebrate your successes. Okay. Um, 
there are there's not a lot of news this week that I have to announce. So the main thing right now is that we are currently running a sale for all of our upgrades. So if you missed this or you didn't see an email about it, um, and you are currently sitting on an older version of the software, this is the time you're definitely going to want to upgrade. We are running a sale through the end of the month, and you can actually get up to 50% off your upgrade um, in Wirecast. And the cool thing is, once you upgrade to the latest version, you really never have to pay for upgrade fees again. You don't have to buy the software ever again. You just can actually annually renew your support subscription and we'll just always give you the latest version. And it's actually a pretty low fee. I think it's like $99 a year and you will always have the latest version of Wirecast. So uh, good time to jump on that and take advantage of that. That's mostly our news for this week, at least internally. And without further ado, I think I wanna get to this topic of how to Get off of your phone, stop using necessarily this. These are great sometimes for streaming, but other times they really impact your ability to do a good quality stream. So uh, we want to talk about that with our guest today. He's an expert in this. This is part of what he does for a living. And um, he's going to be joining us live. Before I bring him on, I want to introduce sort of his background. Um, his name is Vincenzo Landino. He has a great show. You can actually check out some of the stuff he's posted on uh, on Facebook and on YouTube, but he's a busy guy these days. He is not only a filmmaker and a director at Aftermark, which is a creator creative studio, but he's also a winemaker in his spare time and an investor, and he also is an avid sports fan and world traveler. So he's got a lot on his plate, uh, but one of the things he knows really well is how to make creative and relatable live video, and he knows how to not spend a ton of money to do it. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Mr. Vincenzo Landino. Vincenzo. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Hey, man. Thanks for coming hey. on here. Thanks for having me, man. Hey. It's, um, uh, good to finally be on the show. What is it? Yes. Season three? Season, season three. three. We finally got here. I think we were talking it about... <laughs> it took you two seasons to get out of three seasons. Uh, we were talking with you, I think, back in season one about coming on the show. So I'm really glad you finally oh, got here. This is probably true. I probably never responded to Deborah Lee, and that's my fault. <laughs> we just talked about how busy you are, so we understand. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just glad that you're here. So, um, so Vincenzo, tell, tell us a little bit. I, I, you, know, you, as I mentioned, you're a busy guy, but how did you come to become sort of the founder and the creative director at, the, uh, at Aftermark, and, and how did you find your way into live video and live streaming? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, video was always a passion of mine since I was uh, a kid. I was always the guy that was, you know, making videos instead of writing reports because I didn't want to write a book report or <laughs> whatever. I didn't want to write anything. I wanted to, to create video. And, and my dad gave me his Panasonic, you know, semi-professional shoulder camcorder thing. And I'd, I would go around shooting videos. And um, at the time, I didn't know how to edit anything. So it was like, you know, stop, rewind, pause, like do that kind of thing. Anyway. That was when I was in elementary school. I was literally doing this stuff since I was in like fourth grade. And uh, as I got older, I said I wanted to, to get back into video somehow. Um, I found it after Mark uh, about four years ago, uh, two years ago in its current state where we're just video only. Four years ago, we were kind of doing marketing and all this other stuff and mm -hmm. um, strategy, and which is great. And I still love, uh, love doing that. But uh, we focus really on filmmaking uh, for advertising marketing uh the arts sports and uh so that that's our main focus however when live video popped up onto the scene social live video i know live video has been around a lot longer than you know meerkat <laughs> right but uh when that popped up it really uh, struck a chord with me because i was like this is a real a really interesting or a really fun a really relatable way to talk to your audience and you know people were focusing so much on building up these audiences on Twitter or Facebook or wherever they were doing that but they weren't really connecting with them and and the big challenge was how do I get back to basics you know put the social back in social media I know those are all like really buzzy phrases but that was what was happening at uh, I don't know was it 2015 when meerkat popped out and so it was there's a lot of noise out there live video was a way to stand out I took an instant like love to it i was broadcasting constantly like every day and um i, I think i wore myself out because i was literally broadcasting multiple <laughs> times a day and it was just like all right dude you know get slow away. down <laughs> um but i did it 
well enough that brands started noticing. I did some brand streams on my own and it eventually grew into, you know, with aftermarket was like, okay, we're going to help you produce these streams. We're going to help you, you know, set up your, uh, you know, whether it's your, your, your setting and, and the type of gear to use. And then, and, and we actually are now producing, um, streams at events for our, for some of our clients. It's not, again, it's not the biggest part of our business, but it's one of those like really, really great add-ons for a lot of our customers because they just don't know how to do it. And it's mm-hmm. amazing that this, I, we work with really, really large customers that just don't know how to do something that we, you know, this community is probably like, this is so simple, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But, some um, people, and some people are still figuring it out. We kind of spread the gamut here. Some people are just getting into this and other people's, you know, they're way even beyond what we can do on the show. Totally. So Vincenzo, tell me a little bit. Um, so you, you kind of, now you're sort of all in on live video and, you know, it's been um, a learning curve along the way. And we actually want to talk a little bit about some of the tips that you have for, you know, what you've learned in yourself and, and you know, we can actually dive into each topic specifically and you can offer some great advice here. But in addition to that, um, what sort of generally are you noticing is important about live video today? Like why are we, you know, why should people be using it? And what is the reason behind, you know, this taking off? I was, I'm going to, let me answer your first part. You said, why is it important? And I think Mm -hmm. it's important uh, because there's, as I mentioned, like a little briefly before I touched on it, there's a lot of noise out there. There's Mm -hmm. so much information and content being created and video and blogs and audio po- I mean like there's so many things you can listen to or watch or or, or read nowadays right like right. I never can say oh there's nothing out there for me like that's impossible so for a brand and again I'm gonna speak a lot from a I'm gonna say brands just because I, I work with these companies and I know what they're looking for when they're out there saying well how do we put content out the only thing that's important to them, the only thing that matters is, are we relating to the folks that matter, the people that are following us, the uh, our audience, but also people that will eventually buy from us. You know, they want to talk to people that are buying, people that are are actually gonna, you know, that are going to take action, not just uh, oh a like. A like is not an action. I know a lot of social media marketers might be like a little nervous <laughs> hearing that, but that's not in, like that's not the engagement right. that a lot of brands are looking for. They're, the only engagement they care about is that cheddar, you know, flow right. into their bank account. That's all right. I care about. And so, um, that I think is what's important. And then I forgot what the second part of your question was. Well, the second question is why is this taking off right now, right? So why why now? Oh, why now? I, we're just at a, I, I think we're at a crossroads where uh, technology has finally caught up to um, what we, you know our minds can do. Like we have the technology it's so readily available. We were talking about it, or you we were talking about it before. Like we have these phones. Right. It, it's so available to us. Like I, you know, someone's probably most people are probably watching us from their phones. Right. Like think if you think about that for once, like five seconds. Let's just like sit there for a second and think about it. All over the world, there's there's potentially people watching us on their phones, Androids, iPhone, whatever it is. Right. And you know, that's, it's the first time in human history that I believe, I don't know the exact stat, this has overtaken the big screen. You know, this was the second screen at one point. Uh, and I don't, again, I don't know the, the statistics, but I think this is now the first screen, right? It's kind of come up to that. So I think you're you absolutely really think right about on that. that. What's that? I think you're absolutely right about that. Well, and when you think about it, you're like, that's mind blowing. We didn't. We've never had this. We have access to, I, I don't know, what is there, seven point seven billion people on this planet? However many people, I don't know how many people have cell phones, but like anyone that has a cell phone or a, a smartphone, sorry, can have access to this program right now. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, it's a lot harder than that, right? But in theory, Wirecast Live can go out to anyone with a smartphone. Right. Yeah. Anywhere Think in the about, world. Like that's, that that's is insane. really, really impressive. Yeah. So that that's why now is the time because technology's there. I mean, once we get in, we'll get into it a little bit later. But once you know how I'm doing this stream and and, and even how Andrew, you guys are doing it, you know, working the stream from there, 
these aren't massive studios anymore. These aren't like, oh, it's only ABC, NBC, and CBS that can do this. I mean, it's like anybody can do this. It's it's not ent- entirely or incredibly hard. Uh, it does obviously take skill and talent and, and other things, but it's not incredibly hard. Right. And it's not, as we'll talk about, budget is no more uh, a, a barrier because at the worst case, you can do it with your phone. But when you're looking for some more... That's what we're going to talk about. Um, we were talking a little bit about the sort of the importance of live video to brands. We were talking about how this technology now, in theory, makes it possible so that, you know, like never before, the small screen is actually almost the first screen and everybody can now see a, uh, you know, a, a video or potentially this video on their phone, which is really never before happened in the history of mankind. This much access to this much information. Uh, and so that is sort of one of the drivers behind why you think both brands, individuals and organizations should get into this way of communicating with the rest of you know the world. So um, was there any other thoughts you wanted to add on that, onto that before we actually dive in and talk about some practical tips to improve yeah. your product? I think that was a good recap of the of the first 15 minutes of the show. Okay. Um, not really. I, I, I think it was great. Okay. Um, and really, we'll, we'll talk plenty about it. I saw some comments earlier. People were asking about streaming tips and like things like that. I mean, gear. So it's all coming. So yeah, yeah. If you were, if you came back, we'll get into it. People were asking about um, DSLR tips and things like that. So I think sure. let's dive in for now. And so we have some great tips, actually categories uh, that we're going to start with. So the first tip, what is the first tip you recommend for people who want to improve their video production quality? They want to not necessarily use their phone anymore. Um, you know, you know, this tip, although could apply to that, uh, and, and want to still sort of sit, not spend a ton of money. Like, um, how, what are some of the simple things you can do? What's the first thing you can do? So I, the really first and foremost is, is considering your, your background or, or your setting or, or the environment that you're in, like the physical space that you're in, considering all things from lighting to, you know, what's going on around you. Uh, we do a lot of sh- event streaming for our clients and they have massive events where there's people flowing in the background and beautiful exhibitions behind them. Um, we've also done things where, you know, we've got streams. Maybe it's like, it, maybe it ends up being in a room in like a, actually very similar to the room I'm in right now, which is uh, our podcast studio, uh, where I needed to do something. So we dressed it up with fake ivy and and some like mint green paint behind me here which helps just change it a little bit i mean you would never know if you didn't see the room what else is behind me and so those are really important because uh just like a plain white background is not going to do much for for anybody no matter what your content is uh you can be a comedian or you could be uh i guess maybe it would work for a comedian but so that's a bad example. But if a brand's trying to do something, it, it's it's like, well, what's around you? What's happening? And it's hard to light anything if you're in like this static position anywhere. Um, so planning out that background, understanding where the light source is. Natural light is great. Natural light is the best kind of light, better than these artificial lights. I'll tell you that right now. Why not find a spot where you've got some artificial light coming in? Now you save money on lighting. Uh, and it gives you this this uh, you know a really great look uh, the way it falls on your your uh, your guest or yourself however whatever type of stream you're doing. I, actually, the uh, la was it last week or a few weeks ago we were doing some streaming for a customer and we didn't even use lights. It was there was so much light coming in it was like a massive wall of light and so we just faced them towards the light and allowed it to come in and it hit them perfectly. Um, we were able to just adjust some settings in Wirecast and, and kind of take down the exposure a little bit. And it, it was perfect. It was, it cost me nothing. It cost- like that. <laughs> There's that big ball of, uh, su- you know, fire in the sky and you it's should use there. it. You should use it. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a big light. And so, um, I, cause a lot of people talk about lighting and, and, and I wanted to, f- I know I kind of packaged that in with this setting slash background slash environment. And I think the reason I do that is because you can leverage natural light. Uh, I wouldn't say go outside at high noon, right? Because it's a little too bright. Right. right. But you get those shadows, shadows over, over the, the, you know, you know, the, the eyes. eyes. Yeah. 
we've done so many things at like hotels where they have beautiful, you know, windows and, and the light comes in, falls in. It's really, really beautiful. You could throw one of those like quick little shades over the top. You can get yourself some like tissue paper or whatnot if you really have to diffuse. <laughs> I mean, there's so many cheap ways to diffuse light if you had to, uh, you know, natural light that it's like there's no excuse for you not to be able to do it. Right. Um, also, you just want to make sure like, if, are there loud noises? Are you do, trying to stream near a highway? Like, okay, that's probably not a good idea, especially when you're going live because it's not like you can say, cut, next take, we'll do it again. Um, in like when live streaming, social streaming was first happening and there was Meerkat and Periscope and all that stuff, it was like, well, it's live, you know, whatever. Well, yes, that's true. There's things that happen, like just happened on the show now, but that's a different story. When you mm -hmm. can control where you're physically standing or where you're you're conducting your your stream, you should you know you should do that. Um, obviously, there's unforeseen things that will happen, and that's fine. But when you're planning it, you really need to kind of uh, take an, uh, a, a really good look at what's around you. Right. right. Uh, just last week, we were streaming in um, at an event. The event floor was just too loud. They also weren't, they didn't want us to uh, have external lights like this. So there wasn't really a good spot for us to consistently stream. So we ended up doing it in a, uh, like a, a meeting room, but we, we, cr we actually had uh, the production company create a big, a nice background for us that looked really, really pretty. We had really nice uh, white couch for the guests to sit on and conduct interviews. So it looked nice. It was simple, didn't cost a ton. Um, but it got the job done, and, and and again, like I said, it wasn't. We had more control over it. So depending right. on the situation, you have to kind of control what you can. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I think, think that, that, that that's, that's key. key. And um, actually, one of, one of my favorite. favorite I mean, the, the more, more you, you look, look into, into this, this and you realize that, that Hollywood's, Hollywood's been, been doing, doing this for so long, long they really, really have mastered, mastered sort of the art of, of you know combining like controlled spaces, audio and video spaces, with you know. Um, these sort of uh, natural ones. And so, and there's it always can be a bit of a trade off. But my favorite example is like if you ever watch behind the scenes at like, uh, you know, or a behind the scenes take of like, you know, a sitcom or something where they're sitting in their favorite cafe or they're shooting a film scene and, and it's a crowded, you know, room or public place or whatever. What's actually happening is if you were listening to the natural sound, the actors are talking and all of the background people, normally cafes are super loud and noisy, like everyone's just pretending to talk. All the extras and everybody, <laughs> literally the only people you can hear talking on the set are the actors and everyone else is like, oh, and then like laughing and doing jokes and stuff. Yeah, no. And then the in post, <laughs> they add in all those sounds, the clinks of glasses, everything else gets added in later. Yep. But in the moment when they're actually filming those scenes, everything's quiet. The only thing that's being recorded is the dialogue. And that you need to yeah. really think about when controlling your audio. I mean, that's the perfect example of trying to get the best of both worlds. They're pretending like they're in a crowded room that's noisy and everything, but they're not. They're totally recording all the audio in a very clean, totally. controlled environment. Oh, it. I, I mean, so we, we make film. I yeah. mean, uh, completely. It is night and day different than when we're doing live. You don't yeah. have control, you have nothing. So, um, yeah, that's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that that's sort of my p epitome of, like, what what it takes when you're really doing it, like, for, for realsies, like, pro-wise. And then if it's live, you just don't have that benefit. You're in a crowded room, so you need a mic that just is going to just, you know, be so local and just get all that background noise out of there and then, you know, do that. So things those things like that audio is a really important one to consider obviously and then your physical environment when it comes to lighting i love your tip about natural lighting and not costing you anything and just finding different ways to redirect that light um and bounce it and people think it's complicated but honestly it's just like make it look how make it look good right what does it look we good use, to you make changes. we use bounce we use actual bounces i i don't know if you guys know what bounces are but they're like just little discs that have like a silver or a gold side or sometimes they have a white um, reflector. Sometimes we use that when, especially when we have a source of natural light on one side, we'll just bounce light on the other. We won't even use lights. We, we just use, we bounce light around. Talk um, about the you silver can do that versus the board. gold. Why, why do you use one or the other? Well, uh, one's warmer, one's cooler. It just yeah. depends on what you're trying to go for. Uh, the gold gives you a warmer, warmer skin tones and, and the, the, uh, silver will give you cooler looks. Again, you, you have to balance that for what your environment is. Uh, it, it's hard to bounce like fake light you can um but 
natural light is where you're like, that's where I'm bouncing more. Um, you can even use foam board, like white foam board, like, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff where you put on the I'm, wall or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can use that. that. Yeah. You want to go cheap? You don't want to buy a, a reflector? You want right. to go cheap? Use a fo use foam board. Yeah. You can literally bounce light with foam board. Find your kid's Black science project and uh, just yes. turn it around. <laughs> exactly. So, all right, we have a few people joining us here. It looks like we've got, um, uh, you know, some people coming back here. Uh, Hilmar says hi from Iceland. We have uh, a couple other people tuning in, like Mario and Angel. And um, so what I want to kind of dive into, we talked about controlling your physical environment. Some of the people that have already, you know, been asking questions about, it's about cameras. How do I save money when it comes to cameras? Uh, obviously, if you, you know, phones are pretty darn good for camera wise, but you know, there's ways to upgrade a little bit, get a little more control and quality maybe, but not spend an arm and a leg. Sure, so um, for those that don't, uh... For, for those that don't want to spend a lot of money, I mean, there's a lot of options. And there's options that I've tried because I think that it's so valuable to know what all of these options are. This right now is being streamed with a Sony AX53. It's a 4K camcorder. Um, it's not streaming in 4K, but it's whatever it is, seven, whatever we're streaming here, um, Andrew. But that's what it is. Like That's the source. Yeah. 720. All right. So... Uh, that's the source right now for my uh, my video, and I've used that camera as a fail safe numerous times when streaming. For you know, especially when I'm just streaming interviews or something real simple, it's not like a full on show like this. Um, but even if it was, you could totally use a camera like this AX53. We have used. I know there's somebody who was asking about DSLRs earlier, and I'm looking down at the comments. So if you see me looking down, I'm just trying to pick up those. Um, we use a Sony A7R. Two, we mm -hmm. use that to stream. Oftentimes, that's actually what we use our as a main camera. Uh, I've used a Sony A6500, but again, for a lot of people, the A6500 or the A7R are far too expensive. You can pick up a camcorder, whether it's a Canon 1080 Full HD, no 4K, for like 600 bucks. This right. one, I believe, was under a thousand. The one I'm using. Uh, Again, if you're looking to upgrade a little bit, you know, maybe that's still out of your price range. You can find other camcorders that are that are within your price range that'll give you that quality that you want that steps it up from a phone. What is it? So a lot of people have asked me, like, well, how does that upgrade from my phone? And how it upgrades is like it's a better lens. It's a better um, I mean, it's a better lens. It allows more light. It gives you the options. There's a little bit more zoom if I need to. Like right now, I'm I'm zoomed in a little bit tighter to crop in on myself. Um, you know, and that gives me those options to do it. And it's a camcorder. It's under a thousand dollar camcorder. It's not a fancy camera right now. I'm even piping the audio in. I know some people are saying that there was some issues with the audio and whatnot. Um, that was probably again on our end because we had to swap over <laughs> from how we were bringing you into the, the, into the wirecast. It. We were doing an NDI feed at first, and uh, and then now we're bringing you through the board. Got it. Got it. Well, uh, this I can pre I can do almost anything. I c actually I can do everything I can do on a DSLR on this camcorder. And again, it's it's inexpensive. Um, and and by contrast, when we shoot films, we, we have red. We uh, we use red cameras there in house. And for anybody that knows, red cameras are not any less than like forty or fifty grand. But I'm not going to do a live stream with a red camera. It's right. just idiotic, right? That's stupid. <laughs> Over. It's, it's just it's dumb. I've even <laughs> tried it, and like my computer almost blew up, which is awful. Uh, but I don't recommend cameras. You know, there's there's so many excuses that people throw out there. Oh, I, well, I can't afford a a, a, a camera. I'm just going to use my phone. Sure, but you probably spent a thousand bucks. This thing, this thing right here, this phone costs more than that camcorder that I'm recording and that I'm shooting this with right now. Right. I mean, like when we start really thinking about things and you really step back, you don't have to have that excuse. And and that's a simple, simple solution. Very simple solution. Good point. Um, I uploaded your kit list link that you sent. Cool. I put that in the Facebook comments. But if you guys are curious, you can go to https or you know basically kit.com slash vincenzo landino all one word slash wirecast so kit.com slash vincenzo landino slash wirecast so uh head there and you can get some great tips um that vincenzo kind of recommends you know just a few things as he thinks of there's the sony fdr um 
FDRAX 53 and yep. FDRA. That's F- what I'm using. Yeah. yeah, that you're using. So that's a great uh, advice. You've got some the Rode microphones. Um, the Majewell capture card can't live without that. That those that's like yeah the Swiss Army knife of capture cards. It's just so useful, especially for those. And I know we're not like these are for people that are not using like a wirecast box, right? Like mm-hmm. an actual or, or any encoder, like an, a dedicated encoder. Uh, like I'm using my computer as the encoder. I'm using wire, I'm running wirecast. Um, well, actually I'm not running wirecast right this second, but I usually do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I just have to use a capture card. That's the only way your computer will read these nice cameras. your camera as right. an input. So. Yeah, so um, head there, and you know, if you think of other things to add to that kit list, please um, feel sure. free, Vincenzo, over time. But um, we'll direct people there if you're curious. Um, we'll keep talking a little bit more about stuff, and, and as stuff comes up, um, you know, we can talk about that. So the next topic, Great. cameras. I love that point. You, there's some really good cameras out there that aren't that expensive. You can even shop used. You can shop ones that are just out, you know, no totally. longer the newest models, but from a year, a couple of years ago, they're still great and you can get a good deal on them. Um, let's talk a little bit about audio. So sure. clearly audio is really important. Um, what is your tip for bringing in good audio, but not spending a ton of money to do that? You know, I, my favorite option is like using a stick mic, like the road news, uh, news sh- road reporter. Sorry. Mm-hmm. It's in the kit Yep. with a very simple road, the news shooter. Um, uh, it goes actually it plugs right in. It provides phantom fo- power for the stick mic and then it plugs right into the cam. It will plug right into the camcorder and it provides me with crystal clear audio it's like I don't know if it's a hypercardioid mic, meaning that it blocks out all the sound around mm-hmm. it, um, but it's it's really really good. I mean, I've had that down on event floors, and you can r- r- hear the the guest really really well, and not hear the you know a lot of ambient noise. You hear just enough to know you're at an event. Um, so that's like that's been my go-to lately, just because we're we're usually conducting a lot of different streams. And there's a lot of switching on and off between guests and interviewers, and it's just super easy. Um, we've also that we way also you're not use having lavaliers. to hook people up with lobs, right, and mics and stuff. You can yeah. Just point so a stick speaking at them. of lobs, yeah, absolutely. We we do use um, this. This is the Sennheiser AVX. It's it's a lot more expensive than the than the kit. Actually, this right here without a yes, actually this right here is more expensive than I think like two road setups, road full road setups. So we have multiple ones of these, the Sennheisers, and it's just, again, it costs a lot more money. So I would recommend a stick mic. You don't even have to go wireless. You can go wired if you if you really wanna save money because the uh, anytime you start going wireless, you problems are, can arise, you know, interfering with other frequencies. Um, also, just batteries, you know, you need power and if you run out. So we always carry wired options as well. We always at least carry a few XLR cables with us just in case uh it doesn't always look the best which is why i don't like to do it but in a pinch if you absolutely have to and we've done it before we'll plug them in go right into the we need a box to convert it to that for the camera but other than that like it's super simple and that's that's even cheaper because the box is like a 100 bucks the cable you can get for 20 bucks on amazon or something and then the stick mic is like 100 so actually if you want to do it that way you can go even super cheap if you were to, if you if you really wanted to go on a budget, that's the way to do it. Um, I know I it's I'm really almost ashamed that I know all this stuff off the top of my head, but no, uh, this we've is tried exactly all the it. options. I, I, you got to work your way up. You start like it's not like you're having to spend a you know again. It's amazing to me the the, the name brands like Sennheiser, sure, um, you know uh, Audio Technica, some of the other you know they have some really high end options that you oh, can yeah. spend a lot of money on. But it's amazing yep. when you go down down the road a bit and, and to road literally, uh, there's other brands <laughs> that actually provide pretty good stuff and pretty good quality. And actually, I was searching around on YouTube. Um, there's It's always gold when you find somebody who will do a direct mic-to-mic comparison in a YouTube video yeah. or on Vimeo. And you can actually look up, like, you know, test, field test with, you know, Rode XR71, you know, whatever it is, the, the model number you're looking for. And oftentimes you can actually listen and hear how it's recorded and sort of see the sound comparisons. And people get into it, and they're pretty good about sure. posting their test results. So that's another way to kind of decide what's the right sound for your budget. Yeah. 
the you can I, the other option is if you want to you can just use a shotgun mic and i don't have one with me because we packed it away already and it's not here um it's just like the road video mic mm -hmm. uh, shotgun mic or any like any one of those shotgun mics that goes on top of your camera i mean you can you could just go as basic as that uh again you're not going to be as as uh focused audio as you would with a microphone like this where I'm speaking right into it. If I move to here, you probably wouldn't hear me. Uh, but with a shotgun, you'll hear a little bit more of the noise around it. You can do that. We've even attached a, uh, a shotgun mic to a like a boom pole and just put it over the top of you know an interview happening in, in, a, in certain circumstances. And that works too. So you can be as creative as you want. Uh, you just have to know how the tools work. That's really, and I, I recommend on, the only way you're ever going to know that is by testing it out. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we talked a little bit about audio and um, just different options there for your price and what your budget is and how you want to look and kind of maybe some ways to make those decisions on yourself, you know, by yourself. Well, tell me a little bit more about the next category because you got your audio, you got your lighting, you got your video, you got your audio. So now you got to put it all together and send it out, right? You need an encoder for sure. that. How do you save money when looking for encoders and what do you recommend to look for? So I, I'm not going to knock um, – I, I don't want to knock other brands, but mm -hmm. I have used some of the free options out there, and a lot of folks know what those free options are, so it, I'm not going to say them. But it, it, that is where you waste money because you could lose a job. You could, you know, you could ruin streams that way. Um, and I'm not talking about issues like maybe we're having today where there's like – internet connection i'm talking about just the program working mm -hmm. and if you're using a software-based tool like wirecast you know for your for your mac or, or whatever or those other free options you really just need something that works well you can trust it and rely on it and i mean it's it's um what's the word i'm looking for i totally forget the word i'm looking for but like it's consistent in what it does mm -hmm. i and wirecast is the only tool that i've used that does that for me every time. Mm -hmm. I, I know even the things that don't work that I need to like adjust, I know they're not gonna, it's not gonna do that and I know how to make that adjustment. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about like, oh man, it's not gonna work today completely. Like, nope, I know the, the trick, I know the workaround to, for my setup to make things work. And so when you put it all together, if you're using a computer like I do for for my streams, I don't I don't have a wirecast. I don't use a wirecast box. Mm -hmm. I don't use a like a studio setup. I just use my my MacBook Pro, um, my my other MacBook Pro, the one that has inputs, not the stupid Mac Pro <laughs> with touch par that has <laughs> right, like right, right. dongles everywhere. Mine actually has FireWire and USB port connections, which is fantastic. But you know, using using wirecast gives me the confidence that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, I think Wirecast has only ever crashed on me once, like ever. Wow. Uh, knock on wood. Yeah, um, knock on wood. When, when streaming, and I was I was pushing to like five different locations at the same time on a pretty crappy connection, and that's why. But when you pull everything together, Wirecast allows you to set up all your different shots, pull in all your sources, and it's super, I mean, I think it's super intuitive and really, really easy to just, if you know if you know anything about editing video or working with any video editor, you can use Wirecast. Like it's that easy. It's just clicking buttons and pushing it out live. And you can change the, the, the feeds or you can change your sources. You can change what's showing up. You can adjust things like audio. You can adjust, I mean, I can adjust basic color through Wirecast when I have to. Um, white balance when it's off or the camera's just not doing what I want it to do. I can adjust, fine tune it in Wirecast. Um, I can I can set the pictures differently. So if I need to take someone's, you know, someone's uh, angle and I just need to tweak it a little bit, I, I can do that in Wirecast. It, it it really is the best tool for the job. And if I was trying to rely on some free tool, and and this is where and and I, and I know this is kind of like a we're talking a little bit about budget here too. But for me, I don't have the time to waste with a free tool because if it doesn't work, then I'm either out of money or I need to, you know, I owe it back to somebody else or I look like an idiot for not being able to do that. And so uh, that's why, I, I mean, that's why I use Wirecast. Andrew didn't know I was saying all this. I'm not, I, no one asked me to plug Wirecast for the record, um, but it really is the best tool for the job time in and time out. It has been so reliable for me and it would be for you. 
and it's and now you know now with your your cloud what, I, I call it a cloud but your the yearly renewal it's even more affordable for everybody um i paid full price for like wirecast studio you know whatever it was and so now it's even more it's even less expensive uh for folks to buy and you're getting pro level i mean you can push out like studio style content just like this show with wirecast Dude, that was crazy. I was not expecting you to go that deep into Wirecast and why you like it. I'm so glad to reveal the raving fan inside of you on this show. I have <laughs> listen, I'm telling you right now. I've tried the you know like the cheap stuff. It it just it's not worth it, especially when you you know your reputation or you're doing something for a large brand. I can't sit there and be like, "Oh, I'm going to use three initial three initial company or whatever <laughs> else it is." And then it doesn't work. Well, I don't, I don't think you need to be broken. too worried. I mean, if, if, I, if I'm correct here and you're talking about OBS, um, OBS is open source, so there's no company to sure. offend. They're just an open source project. So it's just sure, whoever sure. wants yeah, to I, work on it whenever they want to work on it. I and, guess I mean I don't want to offend people that use it. That's yeah, more of the, I see what you're saying. That's more of Okay. I, I know it's not a company. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. No, and and, uh, and actually, one of the things that I like um, about OBS is actually it's a starter program for a lot of people who want to learn and eventually move to sure. a more sort of purpose-built tool like Wirecast. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that to each their space. I I I would not swear people. I mean, everything you said aside, like I agree with everything you pointed out, but I would not swear people off trying free if they're just trying to get started learning a few things. Now, you don't have to go, you know, if you just want to get familiar, like what what do, what does a stream look like? How do I kind of set up a, something, go to sure. Facebook? How do I go to YouTube? What is a transition? You know, how do I switch my shots and stuff? It gets a little hard to use in those free tools. It's a little, you know, maybe less intuitive. Yes. But what you're learning there is you're getting your feet wet and you don't have to break the bank to do it. Now, that being said, Wirecast also offers is free to download and free to try, and there's an annoying watermark yep. that'll come on. But if you I know. you can even talk to our sales team, uh, and if you've got a really good case, like hey, I I really think about buying. I'm pretty serious. Can you turn the watermark off for me for a little bit? And you know, uh, let's try that. They 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 evaluate that, and they've actually done that for certain um, users just just so they can actually have a, a total run with the software before they buy. So there's a lot of different. So there you go. No excuses. Yeah, and the last thing is the 30 day refund policy so even if you do end up spending the money and buying the software and you still don't like it after 30 days you can return it so um no questions asked. there you go there's there's the plug in the middle of the show there's the plug all right well you started it i'm sorry i just had to i just had i to did pile on. well i had to it's true yeah okay so we're getting to the end of the hour i want to make sure we cover the last sort of tip we did call this five tips so you mentioned this last category details what did you mean when you mm -hmm. say details Details. So details, I'm going to lump in a lot of things. Uh, you want to uh, – there's little things, right? Like your actual content that you're streaming. If you're showing – let's say you're showing something being made with your hands. Maybe it's a baking show and you've got disgusting fingernails. Y yeah, you might want to clean those. Um, yes, you please. Also, yes, please. Uh, you know, do you have like – are you – if you're a woman or a, a man with long hair – are do you constantly play with it maybe you tie it back you know that that it could get annoying for a viewer if you're constantly doing this or flicking it back or or whatever it is and so those are things that are um i i think are are very important they're little details uh my wife who makes her youtube videos she batch records her youtube videos she goes and gets a blowout she gets her hair curled like she actually just goes and gets it done professionally i'm not saying you have to my point is those little things really matter, especially when you're live and you can't just say, oops, let me pause or let me, you know, let me stop that and re-record it. Um, so it's really, really important for you to take into consideration those things. Also, I would say make sure you're fully charged. That's a detail. Uh, it would be really foolish if this camera died in the middle of this conversation and just shut off. So I'm hardwired into an electrical outlet right now. Uh, so that's not going to happen. But if I don't have access to that, I have to make sure that I've got multiple batteries. They're charged, especially when you're on location or at an event. Uh, those are the times when people forget to bring things like extra batteries. Um, so that's really important, whether it's like the camera or your, your audio gear. If you're using wireless audio gear, make sure everything's charged and you have extra batteries and you have extra chargers. I can't stress that enough. 
I, I actually had a, a, a I had audio gear shut off on me. Luckily, it was in between streams, but it just shut off. I thought I put fresh batteries in there. I, I guess not. It, it happens. Luckily, I had a full set of batteries ready to go. You wouldn't believe how many times like people spend the money on the gear and then forget like the minutest little things like batteries or like charging it, right? I mean, <laughs> it's not going to last forever. You have to charge it. Uh, also, another detail you want to focus on is just legalities i don't i'm not a lawyer but if you're showing products or you're playing music or you're showing a film like you just want to make sure you're doing it the right way depend you know there's a lot of people that think like oh well only a few people are going to see this like we said at the very beginning or the the first first time we tried to stream there's there's billions of people that can have access to this content so don't think like oh just just my mom is going to watch it that's that's the wrong mentality to have it you know there's more people than that that are available to watch it and so you just want to make sure are you streaming and it, do you have uh you know backstreet boys playing in the background or something billy joel playing in the background i mean that's probably not kosher and now because we're streaming to facebook or youtube they can just shut off our stream and now your stream is done you could have streamed for an hour and then they were gonna be like oh we saw that this song was playing done that's it pulled your video's done that's not smart. Uh, that, that's not a smart play. So you really have to think about those types of things. Um, and so, yeah, you just want to, you don't want to overlook those type, you know, the legality uh, types of, uh, and now with like GDPR, I don't know if everyone's affected by this, but I know for us, we have to have, uh, we actually have to have forms um, filled out, uh, release forms for anybody that even, if their likeness is, if they walked by, we have to get a form. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really that's become especially at, at least with our the larger customers that are are you know multinational brands that they're require like their laws are requiring it. So those are all things to think about. Uh, I'm not saying that that you know every single person that walks by in your stream is you need to go get a thing for, but you just have to think about it. At least have it at the top of your mind and don't think that it's not serious because it is. Yeah, yeah, no, this is a good point. And and I think one of the things that came out for me when you were talking about that details is almost like you need to plan to forget, you know, so if totally. you are not, you know, there's going to be a million little things and it's hard to keep all that stuff juggled in mind when you're going live. I mean, uh, honestly, every time you go live, you're going to be scrambling to do something. Sometimes it's super simple and you'll get you'll get live, it's no problem. Other times, the more complexity you add, and, and we naturally often want to keep growing and trying new things, and hey, why don't we try this today? Why don't we do a new segment here? Why don't we do this? And and you don't always have time to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, and even if you do, sometimes uh, things will change. Um, either, you know, you just, there's too many factors that you can't control, but what you can control is you can uh, give yourself some backup insurance policies, like charging extra batteries, buying an extra set of <laughs> connectors or cables, just assuming yep. you might forget them or one or two of them might be left on a job previously. So I think if you can kind of anticipate that you might, you know, like the Boy Scout motto, always be prepared. Um, totally. That could be, you know, when you pack, like if you're an overpacker, you know, like there's always finding that balance. Like if you're going on a trip, like how much underwear do you pack? How much, how many like, Lots. you know, <laughs> yeah. How many uh, chargers and USB chargers do you bring? Like you're going to Europe yeah. in a little bit. Did you bring your converter kits for the AC power versus the, you so, know? So I have, I've got, I've got my down, uh, my down, uh, step down uh -huh. in, uh, converters because of the German power. But yep. I also, I made sure that all of my power blocks were dual Hertz. So mm -hmm. they're 50 or 60 Hertz, mm -hmm. 60 Hertz for the United States, 50 Hertz for Germany, or I believe all of Europe. Also the voltages are different. So I can, I could with most of my adapters or with most of my, uh, chargers just plug it into you know a converter I don't need like an actual voltage step down but for some things we did I mean here's here's another thing I didn't want to bring my lights and whatnot there so I actually had uh, gear shipped from uh, Germany I bought it in Germany I and I had it just shipped there because I didn't want to deal with blowing out my lights and all my gear so I, I bought lights that are already set up for for German plugs I mean again it's just thinking ahead um, and it's, it sounds like a, it sounds like, oh man, you know, that's, that, that, that's expensive. Like it's not, you can, there's so many options. We actually sent, uh, we, we bought two soft boxes, 
this is, you know, uh, no one else knows this. Now everyone that's watching this knows this. <laughs> we just bought two soft boxes from German, from German Amazon, Amazon Germany, sorry, and had it shipped to the convention center that we're going to because all we need is two. And like we don't have a ton of space where we're doing it. All, so all we need is two soft boxes. And, and I shipped it there. So I don't have to bring my lights. There's less stuff I have to carry. I can carry more adapters and, and chargers now because I don't have to worry about lights. And um, it'll get me through customs a lot faster than trying to get through with, you know, all this gear. And and that's, again, these are things you have to think about. Yeah. And no, that work, works for us. That's a great strategy. So this begs the question, what are you going to do with those lights when you're all done using them? I'm going to leave them. I'm going <laughs> to either leave them or just don't, like, give them to somebody. If all right. If so hashtag wants. show up, get free lights from Vincenzo. Um, he's going to have some. If you're in Berlin, you I'll give you free lights. <laughs> free lights from Vincenzo. Yeah. Uh, where should they tweet at you if they want free lights there in Germany? If you're in Germany and you're watching this, at Vincenzo Landino and just tweet me and say, <laughs> I want those lights after you're done. I will give them to you. First person that tweets me that's in Germany and can actually pick them up in Berlin yeah. on uh, what's the date? Thursday morning or Wednesday night can have them. Thursday uh, of what's the date? Uh, the twenty Wednesday the twentieth. So Wednesday at night the twentieth. All right, all right. The twentieth of June. Free lights. <laughs> tweet at Vincenzo Lindino. Uh, this is an exclusive. You only get this on Wirecast Live, guys. So congrats. That. Um, that's our giveaway. Oh, actually, and there's a tripod too that we had yeah. sent there, and some like power strips as well. Hey, it's going to make out, man. So this they is another have- way to live stream <laughs> and save uh, save money. Actually, without breaking the bank, you just have Vincenzo buy it for you, and then you get it for free. So we are breaking all kinds of tips here on the show. Yeah, well, it works. <laughs> Uh, number one rule though is you can't. He's not. He doesn't have to drive anywhere, and don't make him wait. He's just gonna leave him on the curb. So you very know, true. You, I'm not going. I'm not going anywhere <laughs> for them. You can pick them up. <laughs> All right. So guys, um, that was our show for today. I really want to say thanks to you, Vincenzo, for uh, bearing with us through the whole hour. There's some great tips and information. Check out his kit list again. That is available at kit.com slash Vincenzo Landino slash Wirecast. Um, let's throw up your contact card one more time. Where can people get more info about what you're up to? Hire you maybe ask for consulting services, get more of you. They can get me there. Uh, really. I, Twitter's great. Okay. Instagram's pretty awesome too. Um, but really anywhere, anywhere you can find me is, is the best. I would say, uh, I would say if you can send me an email or, or hit me up on Twitter, I will, I'll pretty much always respond. Actually Instagram too. I'll always respond to a, a DM and whatnot. So also, I, I, I noticed the period in the, in the Instagram. Uh, if you, if you forget that period, you'll be at, talking to another Vincenzo Landino. So yes, true. <laughs> there so, is another one apparently, <laughs> apparently somewhere out there. All right, man. Well, I wish you the best in Germany. Good luck with the new, Thanks, uh, with the, sh- with the job out there. Thank you so much for coming on the show, bearing with us during our, our internet issues and man, uh, great show. Let's have you on again soon and let us know how it goes in Germany. And if anyone picks up those free lights, thanks for having me, bud. All right, bye. See you later. Take it uh, easy. See you later. See you next time. See ya. <laughs> bye. Now. Bye. All right, guys, that was our show for today. Thanks so much for watching another episode of Wirecast Live. Next week, we will be having on a, uh, we'll be talking all about sort of NDI telestrators and animation tools you can use to mark up your live streams using NDI. There's a great one called Panimation Software with a guest we'll be bringing on named, uh, I'm going to get his name wrong. It's Mike Pan, Pansky, Pan. Uh, you'll have to remind me that in the, we'll put it in the comments, but you can actually get, uh, we'll, we'll post those show cards and we'll let you know, but it's actually going to be really interesting on how you can animate or annotate your live video or even just paint or draw using the new tech NDI software. So, um, we will be looking into that next week. Should be a fun show. I'm going to play around with that probably starting next week. And, uh, we'll get on and talk to one of the creators of that tool. And thank you guys for tuning in today. Also, thanks to our technology partners who make this show possible. We could not do this without them. There are so many different things we use in the studio. Um, Most of these actually we partnered with to just sort of, you know, we help provide them with software. They provide us with hardware. It's a good combo and we often work together to get this stuff on the show, but we like to use whatever we can around here and try out new stuff if you have some gear or if you're with a company and you'd like us to try out something in our studio please let us know we'd be very curious to um we're always changing it studios are ever evolving animals and uh if you are streaming with wirecast don't forget to use the hashtag where is wirecast 
and sign up to be notified if you want to get more shows like this. Again, we're here every Thursday, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time, and we will be back next week. Thanks so much. This has been another episode of Wirecast Live. We will see you next week.